There are so many game companies out there who have fallen from grace after they got too big for their own good. They became more concerned with investors and trends rather than just making the best game possible and doing what's best for the community. But not CD Projekt Red. They're one of the biggest game companies in the world right now, and they still are staying true to who they are. They continue to make great games and enact consumer-friendly practices. We saw that recently with Cyberpunk 2077, announcing that if you buy the game on Xbox One, the upgrade to the Xbox Series X version will be free. CD Projekt Red was among the first, if not the first, to participate in Xbox's cross-gen feature that allows for this one-time purchase but get all versions of that game program, uh, whereas other companies haven't really announced anything yet, and despite this being an optional thing, CD Projekt Red immediately jumped on board. Now we're seeing a similar level of consumer friendliness with GOG, which is owned by CD Projekt Red. A lot of people don't seem to know that. It is the DRM-free PC digital storefront that this consumer-friendly company owns, and they recently announced a consumer-friendly move for the platform. So here's a tweet from the official GOG Twitter page. It reads right here, we always believed in a gamer's first approach, and with this voluntary update to our refund policy, you can get a full refund up to 30 days after purchasing a product, even if you downloaded, launched, and played it. More details here. And then they added, it's important for us to say that this update is possible Thanks to your respect for all the time and hard work put into creating the games you buy on GOG.com and playing by the rules. We're grateful for that and encourage you to continue to do so. So they're saying that people have been really good about not abusing the GOG's consumer-friendly systems, and they hope that with this update, people continue to show that level of respect. And then when somebody asks, wait, how do you police this? The honor system, if I buy your game and download a DRM free copy and then submit a refund request, how do you remove said game from my PC? I'm worried you guys are going to be taken advantage of, GOG. They added, this update was possible thanks to our community's respect for all the time and hard work put into creating the games you buy on GOG.com and playing by the rules. We can only hope and encourage users to continue to do so. And then if you go to the official GOG website, there's a statement provided right here that pretty much says the exact same things the tweet did and also provided here is a link to the FAQ that further elaborates so question one reads how does your updated voluntary refund policy work the response provided explains how basically in order to apply for a refund you have to contact customer support within 30 days of purchase and they'll get back to you and sort things out And also, they're asking that if there is an issue with the game, that customers contact tech support first before issuing a refund. But if there doesn't seem to be any more recourse, people are free to submit that refund request within 30 days of purchase. Next up, we have question number two, which asks, how long does it take to process a refund? Well, it depends on the method of refund that you request. So if you refund in such a way that you get credits in terms of GOG wallet funds, then basically that refund is immediate. But if you want money back in the original format that you paid in, that could take a few business days due to the nature of such transactions. And then there are a few exceptions like pay safe cards, so forth, and gyro pay that for technical reasons might take a few weeks. But generally speaking, they'll try to issue the refund as soon as it is technically allowed. And then here's a question about pre-orders. Much like with a lot of other storefronts, pre-orders can be refunded throughout their pre-order period. So basically, you can cancel any pre-order at any time. And then once the game comes out, you're still going to have those 30 days to mull over whether you want to keep the game or not. There are also avenues to provide refunds for games in development, as well as game packs and DLC. All of that is detailed right here. Same 30-day policy. And then here is a question that asks about the limits behind this refund policy. There is no doubt going to be a few bad apples who might end up abusing this. And so CD Projekt right here, GOG, that is extrapolated on how they plan to prevent potential abuses. So it reads, how often can I refund my games? Is there some sort of limit? They say, we trust that you're making informed purchasing decisions and will use this updated voluntary refund policy only if something doesn't work as you expected. This is why there are no limits, but instead, we reserve the right to refuse refunds in individual cases. Please respect 
respect all the time and hard work put into making the games you play and remember that refunds are not reviews. If you finished the game and didn't like it, please consider sharing your opinion instead. Also, please don't take advantage of our trust by asking for an unreasonable amount of games to be refunded. Don't be that person. No one likes that person. So, you know, these aren't just a bunch of drones who are just giving away refunds. Like, they're going to look at cases individually. And uh, if it's apparent that somebody's abusing the system, if it's clear that somebody's, you know, finishing a game before 30 days are up and then asking for a refund, and if they're doing that consistently, then the folks at GOG might look at that and go, okay, there's something suspicious going on here. We might have to start refusing refunds or we might reach out to them and ask what's going on here because it seems like they're abusing the system. So, you know, they're going to be on the lookout for that kind of stuff. But generally speaking, if your refund request is reasonable and you do so within 30 days, even if you played a couple hours of a game, chances are that you will get that refund. It should be noted that Cyberpunk 2077 will be releasing on GOG and 100% of the revenue of any purchases of Cyberpunk made on GOG goes to CD Projekt as if supporting the company wasn't enough of a reason to get Cyberpunk on uh, GOG. On top of the fact that you'd be getting a DRM free version of the game, now you have this added layer of you have 30 days to uh, determine whether this game lives up to standards. The refund policy for Cyberpunk on GOG is the most generous one by far. So that's possibly one potential reason if you're really not sure about Cyberpunk 2077 and want a large and comfortable safety net. GOG is your go-to. This is definitely kind of risky. It assumes that, you know, most people will be respectful and abide by the morals that makes the system work. All of this could fall apart if a significant number of people start using the system in order to try and play free games. But then again, people who want to play free games, I mean, there are ones who likely pirate games and stuff like that. Like, these are people who would have not paid for games anyway. And again, GOG does reserve the right to refuse refunds in individual cases if they start to realize, okay, this person, they're just trying to play games for free. Now, an added layer of risk for GOG is because it is DRM free, it means that if you download a game, you don't have any online requirements to boot it up. So something people could do is purchase a game, download it, then issue a refund claiming that they didn't like it, but keep the game file and still have that game to play for free, essentially, by abusing this system. CD Projekt does note right here, though, that, quote, we're monitoring the effects of the current update to make sure no one is using this policy to hurt the developers that put their time and heart into making great games. We may refuse refunds in such individual cases. We'd also let you know about any future adjustments in the voluntary refund policy in advance. So, you know, it is possible for them to make some adjustments in order to avoid widespread abuse. Should that be a circumstance they have to deal with. Hopefully, this isn't something that will happen often enough that, you know, those few bad apples will ruin what is a very generous and just kind of insane refund policy system that puts other companies' refund policies to shame. I would say that prior to GOG, the most consumer-friendly refund policy was Steam's, which essentially allows you to purchase a game and issue a refund as long as you request it within 14 days of purchase and you haven't played past two hours. So you could test out a bit of the game. And if you don't like it, you still have those 14 days to mull things over and issue a refund if you so desire. And as far as pre-orders go, you can cancel a pre-order anytime. Epic Game Store later on enacted the same policy as Steam essentially. All games are eligible for refund within 14 days of purchase for any reason. However, you must have not played the game for more than two hours. So those felt pretty generous, but GOG's new refund policy blows those out the water by allowing you to refund a product within 30 days of purchase rather than 14 and not giving you a strict time limit in terms of how many hours can you play before you're no longer eligible. With GOG, it's going to be on a case-by-case -case basis, and they're generally going to be pretty flexible about that. If it's like a 100-hour game and you played five hours of it, you're still likely going to be eligible for a refund if you have tangible reasons for 
issuing that refund request. And there's an especially stark contrast when you compare GOG's new refund policy with how Nintendo does refunds. They basically say all sales are final. It reads right here, all sales, including pre-purchases, are final. If you make a digital pre-purchase on the Nintendo eShop, you have no recourse to get that money back if you one day decide, you know what, I don't want to go through with this pre-purchase. And there's also no grace period of you can play a game up to two hours before deciding whether you want a refund or not. It's just all sales are final. You're locked into whatever purchases you make digitally, period. It is a shitty policy and Nintendo has gotten in legal trouble for it. And it's something that a lot of consumer protection organizations in Europe in particular are trying to pursue and have have Nintendo change because yeah this is uh, just really the worst possible refund policy as for PlayStation you can cancel pre-orders at any time and then for games that are already out you have 14 days in order to request a refund but only so long as you haven't downloaded the game or play the game with Xbox pre-order cancellations you can do that up to 10 days before a game launches so there is a restriction there and when it comes to game refunds it's that same 14 days time frame that a lot of uh, storefronts seem to be using. With Bethesda, they tend to be pretty generous when it comes to pre-order cancellation, but as far as final sales for release games goes, it reads right here, opened computer software, music, or video games cannot be refunded for any reason. Next up, we have Electronic Arts and their Origin Launcher. You can cancel pre-orders at any time. And then as far as refunds for released games go, you have that 14 days grace period if you have not launched the game. And once you do launch the game, you have 24 hours to uh, think about whether you want a refund or not. And finally, for popular digital game storefronts, we have Battle.net. It reads right here, all sales for digital content or services are final and Blizzard reserves the right on whether they want to issue a refund or not. And we have seen mixed things on that front. Some people have been able to request a refund through this page and actually have gotten refunds. Others have had less success depending on how much of the game they've played. So you can see that most companies' refund policies are pretty restrictive and don't allow you to test run a game and make sure that everything runs as expected before determining whether you want to maintain that purchase. With Steam and Epic being among the few who have some leeway on that front, and even EA has that 24-hour grace period after launching a game, but some might argue that that's not enough time. GOG allows people to take their time with a game as long as you issue that refund request within 30 days, which is plenty of time. So it really allows people to make informed purchases and actually test drive a product and make sure that the product itself is what was marketed and that it isn't broken at launch and all of these factors. There is very little chance with GOG that you'll get locked into a purchase because of technicalities. Whereas with a lot of these other services, they could say, well, yeah, the product Product doesn't live up to standards but technically speaking you have waived your right for a refund because you met X Y and Z conditions so yeah this right here this refund policy from GOG is pretty crazy I've never seen anything quite like this in the games industry this is very unprecedented in the digital game storefront landscape of course it'd be CD Projekt Red who would be leading the charge on the most consumer-friendly refund policy out there right now. I just really hope that this doesn't come back to bite them in the ass, that it's not so generous that people will abuse this and cause genuine harm to the company and its finances. But yeah, this is all you need to know about GOG's updated refund policy. What's your take? Do you think that it's maybe a little too generous and that it's too abusable? Or do you think that this will in the long run end up panning out drop a comment below and to be further updated on all things gaming news reviews and discussions stay tuned right here on young yeah i'll see you guys next time young out